talk today about reactive programming. Uh, this is a topic which I was researching quite a while, and it's it's very interesting, and I'm super happy that it's finally like properly coming to JavaScript. Um, so I would like to talk to you about this new framework called, called CycleJS. But first, let's talk what does React reactive even mean? And this is actually a difficult question to answer. There is a lot of things which Reactive actually covers. But I would like to answer a different question first. What is UI? So you probably think it's a pretty simple question, but it's a little bit more complex. So let's start from, from the beginning. So let's say that we have a UI, and it's, it's pretty simple. You can, like, for example, um, click something. You can use some data and display it. So Whenever you have a data which you want to display, you have some, some sort of an input, right? And then whenever you interact with, uh, with your UI by like clicking, you are getting some kind of output. So for example, you can have a pop-up window which will show. So um, after some thinking, you know, there is, a, there is a thing in a programming which has input and output. And it's a function. So can we say that UI is a function? I would say that it is, because it takes some inputs and then displays something based on it, giving us some outputs. But it's not all, because this like simple function will not be interactive. So you know, whenever you click something, there should be some kind of action, right? So what it is in programming or in JavaScript? Um, so you know, those are events. And, um, and by doing so, by working with those events, um, we can model the, this interactivity. But it's not all, because we got all sorts of different things, like data from the server, or something like mouse position. So let's take this, this image. So I Google it, and this is three hours of um, stay or on staying on Reddit. This is how it looks like when you monitor your mouse position and clicks. So are those events? You know, they are events, but we can call it a little bit different. So let's call them streams, right? So yeah, so what are streams? Have a look. So we got a website here, and there is a user who is like, right, me, or like me right now, scrolling or clicking or interacting with our website. So this generates some kinds of events, which are on one timeline. So it, it's very easy then to say that that those are streams, and how we can represent them. We can use observa observables, which are a concept, um, which are created for, for describing those streams, and how it works exactly. So first of all, let's see that, let's say that we have uh, events on a timeline, which are happening at certain times. And we can treat them like arrays. So for example, having an observable, we can, we can take some one stream of some values, and we can use, just like in arrays, a map function to, for example, multiply by 10. So then we have a different stream with outputs like 20, 40, and 60. But it's not all, because we can do all sorts of things with those streams. So first of all, I'll show you my favorite example, which is how to model double clicks, or actually multiple clicks. So first of all, let's imagine that we have a stream with those like click events happening, right? And let's say that we are taking 250 millisecond window to let, try to group them. So right now, we have. Uh, like a groups of events happening. And they, they have some sort of length. So for example, here, as you can see, there will be 
one event. Here would be a group of two, one, and three. So right now, what we can do, we can map those events and get the length of them, which is displayed as length stream. And then we can filter by those which are more than two. So this will give us streams of multiple, multiple clicks. And it happens that we can use this in a very interesting way. And we can use this for all sorts of different events. So I would like to show you some visualization of this, which I found. And it's here. And how it works. So for example, as you can see, um, we have this event stream. And whenever I click some button, there is a, like a key code on the stream. And it's happening on a, during this time. And there is another stream, which is taking this key presses stream and then um, like transfer, changing it to, a, to a, a corresponding char. And we can do other things like, for example, mouse events. So whenever it's clicked and whenever mouse is down and things like this. So this is how stream works, and they are very helpful. But it's not all. Mm, let's talk right now how we can represent this in code. So let's say that we have a function. Let's say that this function is a computer, like I said, the UI is a function. And we get user events. And let's say that we want to do something after user clicks enter. Of course, it's a simplified example, but this is exactly show you what I'm trying to say. So we take this event, take a corresponding value, then filter the stream for just to, just to search for enter, and then we can transform it to screen pixels and display something different. So this is a principle we'll use in this um, we'll use in this reactive programming thing. Um, and you know, all of those things with those streams means one super important thing which other system before weren't taking into account. It says that UIs are async from from the beginning, from the ground. So, you know, whenever you click something, you can take data from a server, and this will happen in the future, not right now. So this makes us a second very important insight, that UIs are not only a function, but they are async. And this would be probably all about UIs, but after some reading, and after reading how Cycle.js works, I found another thing. But let, let me tell you a different story first. So you know, before I was doing web development, I started as a, I started doing robotics. And you know, I, I always wanted to make some cool robots. I wanted to make some kind of drones, or maybe, I don't know, you know, like things like that. And I started going to the lectures, and they showed me something like this. And it was a closed loop system uh, or a feedback system. And you know, it was like all complex. Like the beginning is pretty simple. You got some kind of controllers, then you got a feedback, you know, signals coming from input, then things going to output, you know, but it was more and more complicated and more maps and rules. And you know, I wanted to make robots, right? So I don't need this, right? You know, I started applying all my knowledge from programming, doing for loops, if statement, and things like this. And what happened? Something like this. Yeah, you know, it wasn't what I wanted to do. So it made me think that it's there might be there must be something else. So something which we can apply from this robotics examples to our UI example. And there is actually a thing like this. It's human computer interaction. So it, it says pretty simple things that that human can interact with a computer and then the computer interacts with a human. 
So how computer can do that? It's it's pretty simple. As you can see, we we have some kind of actuators. So like inputs from keyboard, from mouse, or whatever. And then a computer will output an UI, maybe some kind of music, maybe something else. And this is an important thing, because as you can see, it's a cycle. So this is what Cycle.js takes a name from, this important cycle happening during computer human-computer interaction. So we can add this to our insights. And right now, we get a full view how reactive what is this reactive programming? So we know that UI can be a function. We know that UIs are async. And we know that they are a cycle. But we are not sure how to represent cycle yet. So let's talk about this first. Um, have a look. So Cycle.js has this idea called sources, sinks, main, and drivers. First of all, we've got main. Which is a which is a pure which tries to model a pure data flow, so you know just a function, and it it works on sources coming from uh, coming to it, and it outputs things. Things are those actions which will then interact with drivers and do things like DOM events, generate um, requests, or for example, store things in uh, in web storage. So this is an interesting concept, and yeah, my slides work different. OK, so how we can represent this cycle in our code? Uh, first of all, you know, we have, we got those drivers, and we got this main. So drivers will interact with external world, and the main is uh, what computer does, all this computation. And here's one small problem. So this problem is that we are taking the output to an input of an X function, and then this output here. And it's a little bit difficult how to represent this, but this is what exactly Cycle.js does and how it provides us. So it gives us all those three functions, and so, so it gives us the main function, which will be used to model the, how the program in, how the program works and how to interact with it. And then we'll have a drivers, which will define how what we want to exactly do with like external world. And there's all sorts of drivers, which I will tell a little bit later. And the, the most important thing in the cycle.js framework is the cycle run function, which will solve the circle dependency between main and drivers, and will help us make this everything work. Uh, so let's have a look a little bit more about the drivers and all the architecture. Um, OK, so as you can see, there is this this important line. So th this is this very important thing in Cycle.js. We want to separate our our logic, our pure data flow, from side effects, DOM drivers. And this means that it will be very extensible, that we can add multiple drivers, always playing in the same data flow and the same pure functions. And those DOM drivers, for example, they can you know, do all those like write effects and read things, and they will transfer it to different representation. Um, and Cycle.js comes with different drivers, and whenever you want, you can write your own one. And you have things like socket IO drivers, you've got things like HTML notifications, local storage, or even React Native, um, which is very nice. Um, a very nice thing for working with fonts. So Cycle.js tries to make it as well as a driver. And there's many, many more, which you know you can find them on the website, or you can uh, try to write your own. Yeah. So we know about all those things. So maybe it's, it's, it's time to build something and see how it works. OK. 
let's build something super simple. Let's, let's build a clicky box. So whenever you click, it should change to on. And when you like toggle it, it should be off. Let's see how, it, how we can make it work. So Cyclo.js uses this thing called HyperScript, which is um, very similar to JSX. It's just, it just uh, virtual DOM, but very lightweight. Um, it can work with JSX. But let's see how HyperScript works first. Um, we can see that it, it makes a super simple thing, so input with checkbox input and label, which will be either toggled, it will display on or off. And here we start with false. So whenever I click, yeah, nothing will happen, right? So how, how we can make this work? It's pretty simple. First of all, we are using sources, which are coming to us like in this function. And we are selecting this input, looking for here, listening for change events. And then we are mapping this to Boolean values. So we have either false or true. But nothing will happen without this line. So we always have to start with something. So right now we are starting with false. And the rest is the same as before. So as you can see, when I click, it will work. And this is like all the difficult ideas, how it should work, and all the things will work in the same way. So let's look a little bit more. What if you want to build something bigger? Because we are making, we are building a bigger applications. And our framework should support this, and or at least show us how. And Cyclejs support this. If very very interesting idea. So it tries to make all the components composable. So whenever we have one component, we can compose it with different components, and it's it it, it will work like this. And I have this one example how to make a component, a clicky box component, which we show, which we saw before. So how we can do that? So first of all, we got this function, which will be this component, because as I told you, everything in Cyclejs will be a pure function, and the sources are coming inside this component with two things. First of all, it's this it's it's a DOM, so we can use it to listen for events and other things like this. And also props, which will come to the component as things how, how we want to how we want to render our component in the beginning. So as you can see in this line, we will make take those props and take initial. So it's only because we have to be sure that it's always the first and there's no other values. And then we need to, so, so we got props, so our initial values. And then we want to you know, make this component interactive. So there will be a new values. And this, this dollar thing means that this is just convention. So in, in Cyclejs, everything is a stream. So the same, we got new value stream. So the same you've seen before, we we are selecting an, selecting an input, then listening for change events, and making new values from, uh, from the stream. Then what we want to do is use a concat operator. So we can have like those prop stream and new value stream. We can concat them. So Right now, it will just it will model the value of uh, of this component, and the next thing is how we want to display it. So first of all, first of all, we want to um, we want to combine latest with from from props and value. So we want to take we can take things like uh, for example, label name or something, something which will not change because of value. 
it would just be the information. And right now you can see we can we have a, the component which will display things. So as you can see here, um, this is a value of a component. So is it toggled or not? And props on and props off. This will be text which will be displayed. So yeah. So right now, as you can see, this is a, a component which which can live on its own, and we can attach it with different components, so make multiple clicky boxes and see and display them. Um, but clicky box should always return something. So first of all, it should return a return this view. So how it will this will be passed to the driver and how the whole application will look like. And of course, the value of the component if you want to use it somewhere else. OK, so I'll sh I want to show you something more interactive than just you know, lines of code. Maybe this will be something which really understand a little bit better. Um, so I have it here. OK, so there's a simple program, uh, a simple counter with two buttons. We have a decrement and increment button. So what happens when we click increment? So we click it, right? So there is an event. Then event is transferred to plus one. Then we are merging those things. We want to scan, so like um, so add old values and new values, the same as reduce. And with having this, we want to display a new view. So whenever I create click things, you can see that those are happening uh, at certain time. So this is what we want to model, this asynchronity. And as you can see, whenever this pops, the new values will be displayed and rendered. OK, pretty simple, right? Uh, we can have a look how, the, how, it's, how it's done. So this, this thing shows the whole application written in Cycle.js. Um, so you know, the same you've, you've seen. Let's select a decrement button, then make minus one event then from increment plus one events. Um, then we want to merge those decrement and increment. So we have uh, one stream of values, pluses and minuses. We start with zero, then we reduce to have a, you know, the old values and new values uh, as a sum. And then we can display our view. So it's, it's actually pretty simple, and it's all you have to know to start working in Cycle.js. Um, but that, there's a little bit more. And actually, maybe I'll return back to our example. So as you can see, we got those three boxes. We got an intent box, model box, and view box. So you know, this is something which I want to look a little bit more. Because Cycle.js comes with this idea, this um, this pattern, the same as you know, Flex was a pattern for React. It's a model view intent intent architecture, and how it works. So yeah, you remember we always start with a user, which is very important for Cycle.js like way of thinking, and we got intent, which is what user wanted to do. So, you know, keyboard clicks, mouse moves, mouse clicks, and all the stuff. And this will output an observable, which will then go to model. Model says what will happen with those values. So the same as you've seen, right? So how we can combine those decrement and increment uh, increment uh, actions, so plus one, minus one, and so on, and how this will go to one value or multiple values. And th then this will go to view, which will display DOM elements, or maybe do something else, like local storage and stuff. So yeah, as you can see, pretty simple, and this is the idea behind. OK, um, so maybe let's try to apply our model view intent architecture to clicky box, how this will work. OK, pretty simple. 
we are creating a intent function, a model function, and a view function. So intent will take DOM and give us how things change. Then model will take this change and props and will generate one value or like multiple values. And the view will take those and generate the view. OK, so how intent function will work? You know it, right? So select input, listen for change events, so on. Then how model will work? As you can see, it's a pure function. So it take, takes initial props and then concats props and values. And how view works? So view will be, oh, I think I lost the function. So it does all the, all the display thing. OK. So yeah, I guess we don't really have any questions, or do we? Probably not. So that's all. Thanks, guys, for listening. I think it's, it's all I wanted to say about Cycle.js. And I really would like you to have a look, try, and at least try to think how you can use reactive programming and how you can start thinking in this way. Because I think it's, it's, it's the future. I think we'll do more and more things like this. I, I guess that this is why we had React in JavaScript world, why this is going in this way. I would say this is the right choice. And it's, it's nice to see a new framework which tries to show those things. I don't know if Cycle.js will be a go-to framework or will be popular. Probably not. But I, it, it's, it's at least interesting to have a look and see how it works. So yeah, that's all, probably. Thanks a lot. I, I've got a question.